This is the Generation Report. On August 11th, the Washington Post reported that seven days prior, President Biden hosted a group of historians at the White House to discuss, in the words of the story, the dire condition of democracy at home and abroad. I was not the least bit surprised by this story. Link in the description. And if you've listened to this series before, you probably weren't either. But every bit as revealing as the topic of discussion and the participants in the meeting is the Washington Post description of what was said during the meeting, which has since been confirmed by the participants. The article reads, Comparisons were made to the years before the 1860 election, when Abraham Lincoln warned that a house divided against itself cannot stand, and the lead-up to the 1940 election, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt battled domestic sympathy for European fascism and resistance to the United States joining World War II. As I discussed in the most recent episode of this series, however historians view American history, they will make connections between the past and the present. And in the connections made during the meeting in the White House, we clearly see how the attendees of that meeting view America's past and present. In their version of history, the political divides of the past confirm that history is a struggle between enlightened and unenlightened viewpoints and between enlightened and unenlightened people. In their version of history, the recurrence of major crises in America about every 80 years is simply proof of America's continual struggle with its worst evils. In their version of history, the present crisis in America and around the world has been brought about by unenlightened people and ideas. In their version of history, the way forward is simple. The enlightened people and ideas must win. In the fourth turning, based on what they saw in America's past, Strauss and Howe tacitly assumed that during the next crisis era, most Americans would at least intuit that they were living through a crisis. In most respects, Strauss and Howe have been proven right, But there is a giant caveat. They did not foresee that leading historians and politicians would see a crisis only in reacting to events overseas and to the possibility that their opponents might win the next election. That distinction is absolutely critical, and that is why these historians went to the White House two weeks ago. Back in March, I predicted we would soon see the rise of total unanimity of mainstream thought about American history. This story in the Washington Post and the reaction to it convinced me we have reached that point. The historical references for the present invoked in the mainstream have become entirely predictable, contextually empty, and nearly worthless. And lately, no one has been making more meaningless historical references than one of the historians who attended the meeting at the White House, Michael Beschloss. I can scarcely think of an easier thing for an historian to do than invoke names and images from one era or another to raise the stakes of current events and passing it all off as historical context. But that's where we are with historians today. In closing, it's clear that the road to the White House meeting of August 4th began after Charlottesville in August 2017. From that moment on, Every twist and turn of this crisis has been cast by historians as a kind of referendum on American democracy itself. And that same month, using language remarkably similar to John Meacham's The Soul of America, which would come out in 2018, The Atlantic published an essay by a guest contributor which included these words. The giant forward steps we have taken in recent years are being met by a ferocious pushback from the oldest and darkest forces in America. Are we really surprised they rose up? Are we really surprised they lashed back? Did we really think they would be extinguished with a whimper rather than a fight? That guest contributor was the current president of the United States, Joe Biden. That's where we are, and it's not, this is not a drill. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy this series, please like this episode, subscribe to the channel, and share both with as many people as you can. I'm Paul Zemi Finn. May God bless America.